Welcome back to Creative Messes. Ah. I was talking about how I'm putting my music reviews on a hiatus from my magazine. And um, even though the magazine has gotten way better in quality, in my opinion, uh, visually and also the way I do the magazine is now uh, better just from looking at it and going I want to do something different and introduce some segments and stuff and then I'm also um, doing a, like writing my grandma's life story so I'm trying to I've got to remember to do that but then also when I when I I think subconsciously when I go I'm going to put that on hiatus I also go I also start coming up with other ideas of things to do after I do that it's because you like me are like creative like and you can't you just you come up with ideas every two seconds yeah if I made every single idea that I came up with you guys would be so fucking overwhelmed with content you'd be you'd unsubscribe just purely out of the amount that I post yeah I come up with a new idea probably every dang day Okay. Yeah. And you gotta pick and choose your battles. Yeah. It's a miracle that I even make anything at this stage. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I think I might have talked about this before as well. I, I'm sorry if I, I always repeat myself, but you know I'm an old man. That's what I do. Yeah. I uh, I don't suffer from writer's block often or artist block, which a lot of people yeah. are like, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. well, Mr. Got- fucking special over here thinks <laughs> he's so good because he doesn't get writer's block. It's like, no, I don't. But I mean, I do. I have occasionally, but primarily, what happens is, is that I actually have the opposite, where I have too many fucking ideas, and people don't believe that. People are literally, literally like, "That's not, that's not a real thing." Mm. I'm like, but it is though, and it sucks because you come up with ideas so damn quickly and so often, and you're passionate about all of them, yet you can't make them all because you have to pick one. You have well, to pick one. You yeah. put your energy into everything, then nothing happens. You just don't have the time to make everything. And the one thing that you guys need to yeah. understand, I always say, it's just us okay yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like with my projects i it's just me i don't i'm not there's no one else hmm. with your projects it's just you and it's no one else you know what i mean yeah you get people need to appreciate that <laughs> hmm. they need to you can't just sit around waiting for a bolt of lightning to hit you in the head and you come up with an idea yeah you have to do the work yeah That's because good. because a lot of the thing a lot of the time i just go I'm just waiting for a good idea, even though there's clearly something that I should be doing. Well, this is the thing, right? Okay, so Ooh, I, I understand what you're talk, what you're saying, mm. and that's true. But it also, in my opinion, it depends on what needs to be done, right? Yeah. So if you're just a casual artist or you know just making something for fun, I think that waiting for lightning to strike is perfectly valid because the lightning strike is often going to be some of your best work. Mm. because it's something that hits you one day and you just go that's a great idea because I actually think what happens is you get ideas constantly yeah. but very few of them are good enough for you to actually go oh I want to make that mm. you know what I mean if you're working on like you know a, a commission project or something that actually needs to be done then yeah you do kind of have to force it because you got a time limit you know and uh, maybe forcing it might, might not result in your best work, but hey, as long as it results in something, sometimes it's all you need. Yeah. Know, it's a case by case, in my opinion. Yeah. I've never, I don't, I've had a few dream ideas, but I don't think I've ever done anything with them. I do write them down there. Yeah. And some interesting, sometimes I've had dreams of like a full movie. They're like, this has actually kind of got something to it. Mm-hmm. Often they involve robots. <laughs> Whales. Yeah. Because I have this whale book that I read right before bed. And I have a fair few end of the world sort of running away sort of dreams. Oh, yeah. They happen. Not really anything most of the time. You know what I don't have? I don't have dreams about things that I come actually working on like right now. You know? I don't yeah. think I've ever had a dream about Cass yeah. or Mary in the Apocalypse, which sucks because how cool would that be? It's getting dreams about, even if they, they're not good, they're like, oh, you know, some new content <laughs> that like was created by me but wasn't at the same time. Yeah. My dreams aren't usually too heavily related to whatever's going on in my life. Um, I'm, I'm definitely one of those random nonsense that, kind of guys. The only time that I have dreams that are Ow. really related to what's going on in my life is when I is when I think about that stuff all the time, and then it and then it, then it gets into my dreams because it's just like well, I'm that's, obsessively uh, yeah. thinking about it, and then it just, and then it just infects my dreams, and I'm like, well, great, I had a dream about that. That's just messed up my day now. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta sit down and actually bloody well work now, don't you? 
third at Harlem Market. Yeah. Not Thurman compared to the guy in the third. third. I will say, we, you know, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if you feel this, but the the most that I personally feel um, creative, or not creative, um, <laughs> I feel I feel best at working. Or I, like I, I feel most. What's the word I'm talking? Inspired, I guess, is what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. Um, or or motivated is when I have less time to do it. You know. Yeah. So recently, because I've been looking after the puppy so much, I've been thinking about how much I want to just get in there and work. And so as a result, whenever I do get time, I just sit there and I work for fucking hours. Yeah. Like I said, I've written all these bloody scripts. Yeah. And I've just gone on and on and on and on. One of my scripts is nearly 10,000 words. <laughs> so I don't know how long that is, but it's longer than the others yeah. <laughs> by a considerable amount. The next shortest one is around 4,000 words. Yeah, that's like my supercast theory videos. You know how long that converts into time? No. Vaguely? No. Um... I think that my retirement video was something like 5,000 words, and that's a 22 minute video. So, okay. But, I think that the end of that video was... So what you're saying is um, I might have a roughly like 44 minute video on my hands? Maybe. <laughs> but I do chop stuff out, like I did with my super light video, like I had a whole bit on Kelly Racing that I'd recorded. And I got the footage for. Yeah, sometimes. Um, and I just went. No. Things don't. Oh, fuck me. Things don't work out as well as you. Because I, I got up to the editing stage. Well, I hadn't. I didn't get the footage. I I got up to editing it where I put the audio in and then just find the footage that I need. And I realized that. Oh, hang on, do I? I can't remember. What's my process? <laughs> it's. I, I I write the script. And then I think I find the footage and then I put it in the video so I usually end up with more footage than I need and I have like unnecessary bits of footage that I'm never going to use so sometimes you'll find the same clips in a different video yeah like I've got clips from the retirement video that are in Scott McLaughlin video that's, that's fine it just like means that. you get less footage that you need to find yeah well because I've got that many clips that probably might not even have gotten used mm. yeah. Footage is not a concern for me. No. Um, writing is not a concern for me. Recording is not a concern for me. Editing, though? Oh, golly. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to do about all this editing. But I am going to try and do what you said. I'm going to try and make it a structure, like a formula. Like, not in the point that it's, like, predictable and boring, but, like... I was thinking, like, for each of the videos, I would give something like a... Have it, like, have, like, a... Like a background, right? Mm-hmm. Like a cool looking, like, back, thematic background to whatever the video is about. And so, whenever I have like a talking scene that doesn't have footage in the background, I would use that background and put like things on it so it kind of gives it a person, like an identity, each video, you know? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, I'm just watching this amp. Oh, who gives a shit? <laughs> You're looking at the video game? Come on, man. <laughs> I'm the one that's doing that. What's he doing? Uh, he's dying. Yeah. Well, he's about to be, at least. He's mocking us right now. He's talking about how cool Ganon is. Ganon doesn't care about him. Whoa. What's this? This is badass. Whoa. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Whoa. It looks, it looks like what the fuck? Yeah, so now she's all powered up because uh, she's all magicked up from the few shadow... Mm. Just annihilated him. He is still alive. He was just saying that Ganon would resurrect him. So, you know, mm. he must save Zedler. Mm. Uh, you get it. You say he mm. looks like love struck. Like he not always the time. Look, He always looks love struck. Mm. He's always got like this cute look in his face. He does. He looks. He looks. He's, he's got a, a baby chibi. Face. That's what he is. Chibi. <laughs> 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 Jimmy Link every time. Can I tell you a weird fun fact about this Link? Yeah. The voice actor hated voicing him. Uh. This is a fun fact. Oh, hold on. Hold the fucking phone. 
I'm not doing that shit again. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you actually walk away from the whole hug? Okay. I almost, almost. Okay, next time on... Oh, fucking no, dude. Just end the episode.